Okay, aloha and mahalo for joining. My name is David Sakota, and I am the Fisheries Program Manager for the State of Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Aquatic Resources. I'll be conducting tonight's public hearing. It is now 5.32 p.m. and this public hearing is called to order. This is a formal public hearing on proposed amendments to Hawaii Administrative Rules or HAR Chapter 13-75, Rules Regulating the Possession and Use of Certain Fishing Gear and HAR Chapter 13-60.4, West Hawaii Regional Fishery Management Area, Hawaii. The primary purpose of these amendments is to establish a required annual laynet permit and associated permit fee that would replace the existing one-time laynet registration. Other proposed amendments are being included to strengthen the enforceability of the laynet rules, to bring the rules into conformity with other laws, and to address other housekeeping matters. As required by law, the proposed rules have been drafted in Ramsair format copies of which can be found in the announcement section of the DAR website. Those attending the meeting in person may also ask DAR staff members um, for a copy. The purpose of this hearing is to provide the public the opportunity to provide comments in the form of oral and written testimony on these proposed amendments. Approval to conduct this public hearing was obtained from the Board of Land and Natural Resources at their board meeting on May 13th, 2022. The legal notice of this public hearing was published in the July 24th, 2022 Sunday issue of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. First, we'll watch a short video explaining the proposed changes to the administrative rules. We will then begin the public testimony period, which will be conducted as follows. Everyone testifying via Zoom was required to pre-register in order to get the link to testify. Pre-registration to testify via Zoom closed one hour before this meeting at 4.30 p.m. However, if you missed the deadline to testify uh, or to pre-register, you may still provide oral testimony at one of the in-person hearing locations listed in this slide, or you may submit written testimony by following the directions at the bottom of the slide. Everyone testifying in person at one of the host sites should have written their information down on the sign-in sheet provided at the host site. Those attending in person who have not registered but would like to provide testimony can alert the DAR representative at this time and their name will be added to the list. It is important that everyone who wishes to testify provide their name and contact information so we have an accurate record of everyone providing testimony. You will be called upon by a member of the DAR staff when it is your turn to testify. We ask that all individuals attending virtually keep their microphones muted when not speaking. We will take testimony in the following order. First, we'll take in person testimony from people who have been signed up to testify beginning in Hilo, then Kona, then Maui, then Lanai, then Molokai, then Kauai, then Oahu. Second, we'll take Zoom testimony. And last, we'll take anyone who arrived late or signed up late to testify in person at the host site. Please keep your testimony brief and on the subject to allow everyone the opportunity to testify. Each person will be given three minutes. Please be aware that if you go beyond three minutes, I will kindly ask you to conclude your testimony. Uh, if there is time at the end and you wish to provide additional testimony after everyone else has had their chance, uh, then we'll give you that opportunity as well. We're recording this hearing to make a written record. So please state your full name be before giving your testimony. Make sure to speak clearly so we accurately record your testimony for the record. And please turn off the live YouTube stream of this hearing while testifying as it will cause an echo. Please remember to respect the opinions of all testifiers and that this hearing is not an opportunity for accusations or rebuttals. There may be differing opinions 
Everyone will have an opportunity to voice their opinion for the department to consider. All testimony should be directed to me, not to the audience. Please note that this hearing is simultaneously being streamed on YouTube. The live stream will be recorded and preserved on YouTube as a matter of public record. Please be aware that by offering your oral testimony today, you are consenting to being audio and video recorded if your camera is on. Let's begin with a short video on the background explaining the proposed changes to the administrative rules. The primary change to the rules removes the existing LANET registration requirement and implements a new LANET permit for the use and possession of LANETs. The purpose of this change will be to promote better compliance, to enhance enforceability, to streamline management, and to provide stronger statistical data regarding usership. In 2021, the department successfully petitioned the Hawaii State Legislature for expanded legislative authority, allowing us to make these amendments to HAR chapters 13-75 and 13-60.4. Further, since we are taking these chapters through the rulemaking process, we are using it as an opportunity to include additional housekeeping amendments to each chapter that we have identified in order to get the rules up to date and relevant. We'll start with chapter 13-75, rules regulating the possession and use of certain fishing gear. Section one, definitions. The department has received inquiries about what constitutes a freshwater stream for the purposes of the LANET rule. The department has interpreted the existing rule to prohibit laynet fishing in any stream, canal, or other channelized body of surface water through which freshwater flows or is designed to flow regardless of the actual salinity of the water. We have also received inquiries regarding the definitions of throw net and multi-panel laynet. So in response to these inquiries, we are proposing to add three definitions to this section, definitions for freshwater stream, multi-panel laynet, and throw net. Section 8 Firearms. The current rule includes a provision that allows the take of sharks with firearms in the state. However, the legislature passed Act 51 in 2021 that prohibits intentionally or knowingly killing a shark within state marine waters. Act 51 took effect on January 1, 2022. So, the proposed amendment would delete sharks from the rule in order to comply with the new law. Section 12, Gill Nets. The proposed amendments to this section are to clarify that it is unlawful for any person to leave a gill net unattended for any amount of time and that the person using the gill net must visually inspect the net within two hours of deployment and must release any threatened, endangered, prohibited, or unwanted species. Here is what the original rule currently looks like. And here are the proposed amendments. As you can see, the amendments essentially shift the wording around and clarify some of the language within the rule. Also, this will apply to all gill nets, including gill nets used for lay net fishing, surround net fishing, or other fishing methods requiring the use of a gill net. This is what the final gill net rule would look like as amended. Section 12.2, Akule Nets. The current rule prohibits non-commercial fishers from taking a kule with any net, including throw nets, with a stretched mesh of less than two and three quarter inches. The proposed amendment would allow the use of legal throw nets, which must have a stretched mesh of at least two inches to take a kule. It is uncommon to catch a kule with a throw net, but it can occur, and the department believes that this allowance would not result in adverse impacts to the resource. Here is what the final Akule net rule would look like as amended.
Section 12.4, LANETs. The current LANET rule requires all LANETs to be registered with the department. Registration is a one-time requirement. While the current rule requires net owners to report when a registered net is lost, destroyed, sold, traded, stolen, given away, or otherwise no longer the property of the registered owner, in practice, this is rarely reported. As a result, the department does not have a good estimate of the number of lay nets in use or the number of fishers actively using their nets each year. In contrast, the proposed annual lay net permit would allow the department to track the number of permitted lay net fishers on a yearly basis. The proposed lay net permit would also encourage increased compliance with lay net regulations and help the department to crack down on the illegal use of lay nets. Unlike a registration, a permit is revocable. For example, under the current rule, if a person has been convicted of a lay net violation, the department has no way of prohibiting them from registering and using a new lay net. However, under the proposed rule, lay net users could lose their permit if convicted of a violation, providing greater incentive to comply with the law. The department proposes charging a $25 permit fee paid at first issuance of the permit and each year upon renewal of the permit, as well as a $10 duplicate permit fee. These fees will be a means to offset the costs of administering the LANET permit. However, fees may be waived upon request for Hawaii residents eligible for benefits under the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. Removing the LANET registration requirement would significantly reduce the burden on LANET fishers as well as DAR staff. Under the current rule, fishers must contact DAR to register each LANET they would like to use and DAR staff assign a unique registration number to each LANET that is registered and enter it into a database. Under the proposed amendment, a fisher would only need to obtain a permit once a year and they would be able to obtain and use multiple LANETs under their permit. So rather than each net having a unique registration number, the proposed rule would require each LANET to be labeled with the LANET user's permit number. The current LANET rule allows fishers to leave a LANET unattended for up to a half hour. This allowance makes enforcement difficult as officers from the department's Division of Conservation and Resources Enforcement, or DOCARE, must observe an unattended LANET for 30 minutes before determining that a violation has occurred. Further, monk seals, turtles, and other marine life can become entangled and die during the half hour period of unattendance. The proposed amendments require the LANET to be attended for the entire time it is deployed and clarifies that a LANET will be considered unattended if the LANET or its attached surface buoys are not within eyesight of the LANET permit holder using the net. Section 12.5, State Waters Around Molokai, Special Rules. The proposed amendments are necessary to implement the statewide LANET permit requirement and remove the existing statewide LANET registration requirement. However, the amendments to this section will not change the unique place-based LANET regulations established for Molokai. Here are the proposed amendments. Here is what the final amended rule will look like. Chapter 13-75 also includes a number of miscellaneous housekeeping amendments as mentioned earlier. Section 13-75-2 and 2.5 are being amended and added respectively for uniformity with other chapters, to reflect current penalty authority, and to recognize asset forfeiture as an enforcement tool for DOE care officers. Further, we're also making other minor formatting and grammatical corrections throughout the chapter. Moving on to the changes for HAR Chapter 13-60.4, West Hawaii Regional Fishery Management Area, Hawaii, commonly referred to as the Wharf Ma. Section 3, Definitions. 
Here we're adding the same definition for multi-panel laynet as in the previous chapter discussed earlier in this presentation, HAR chapter 13-75. Section 5, subsection C6, activities prohibited within the Koloko Honokohao fish replenishment area. The amendments to this section remove references to registered nets. Here is what the final rule would look like as amended. Section 6, Laynet Registration and Use Requirements. Similar to the special Laynet rules for Molokai reviewed earlier in this presentation, these proposed amendments are necessary to implement the statewide Laynet permit requirement and remove the existing statewide Laynet registration requirement, but they will not change the unique place-based regulations for West Hawaii. The original rule makes it unlawful to possess or use a Laynet that has not been registered. The amended rule makes it unlawful to possess or use a laynet in state waters without first obtaining a laynet permit pursuant to HAR section 13-75-12.4 that we also reviewed earlier in this presentation. The current rule requires identification tags with the laynet registration number and the amended rule requires tags with the laynet user's permit number. Additionally, tags will no longer be provided by the department. However, the department will provide instructions on how users can fashion their own tags to comply with the rule. The current rule allows laynet users to leave a laynet unattended for up to 30 minutes. Under the amended rule, fishers will be prohibited from leaving a deployed laynet unattended for any period of time, mirroring the amendments to HAR Chapter 13-75. Also identical to Chapter 13-75, the proposed amendments to HAR 13-60.4 also include an amendment to Section 8 and an addition of a Section 8.5 for uniformity with other chapters to reflect current penalty authority and to recognize asset forfeiture as an enforcement tool for doe care officers. Further, we're also making other minor formatting and grammatical corrections throughout this chapter. We've now reached the testimony portion of this presentation. You will be called upon by a member of the DAR staff when it is your turn to testify. We ask that all individuals attending virtually keep their microphones muted when not speaking. We will take testimony in the following order. First, we'll take in-person testimony from people who have been signed up to testify beginning in Hilo, then Kona, then Maui, then Lanai, then Molokai, then Kauai, then Oahu. Second, we'll take Zoom testimony. And last, we'll take anyone who arrived late or signed up late to testify in person at the host sites. As a reminder, please keep your testimony to three minutes in order to ensure that everyone who signed up has a chance to give testimony. If there is extra time at the end of everyone on the list and you would like more time to testify, we will allow those who already spoke to give additional testimony. We will begin with any in-person testifiers in Hilo. So if I could have DAR staff in Hilo call the testifiers in the order they signed up to testify. Uh, we have Sean Galdera that would like to provide testimony. Hello, my name is Sean Galdera. And I would like to oppose this amendment due to the fact that now we're getting a license fee, which is, in our language, we was brought up young from Okupunas, saying that we had Hawaiian gathering rights. With this license fee, it becomes a privilege now. We've got to ask permission Give you all $25 so we can go fishing and go collect food for our family. 
That's like our icebox. Now you're putting on coin machine on our icebox. So now it's not our icebox anymore. So it's a vending machine. So in that particular reason, I never get a chance to look over the, the whole thing. I'll, I'll get back to you, but that's, that's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That's all we have in Hilo. Okay, um, next we'll take any in-person testimony in Kona. So if I could have our staff in Kona call testifiers in order they signed up. If there are currently no testifiers I, here in Kona. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll take any in-person testimony in Maui. Currently, nobody here in Maui to provide testimony. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll take any in-person testimony in Lanai. Nobody here for testimony on Lanai. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we'll take any in-person testimony on Molokai. Okay. Hello, my couple. My name is Malia. I think I'm ready to with you guys to testify. Um, I'm not in opposition to conservation. Consideration for the indigenous population needs to be taken into, um, into consideration here, and it's not. Um, you folks know that there's an indigenous population that, that lived in these islands, born and raised generations. We're here. I'm here to tell you we're here. We're not going anywhere. We love you guys, but a serious this is you're 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 stopping us from feeding our family i'm not going to testify on the big island for us it's not traditional to do that you don't go and speak about somebody else's home tell them what to do there tell them how to feed their children Please don't do that to us. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anybody else on Molokai? Aloha, my name is Cora. Oh, I'm sorry, um, Cora, we're going with the in-person post site on Molokai. Um, those that are joining by Zoom uh, will have their turn to testify as well. Okay, there's um there's some uncles that are speaking with your dar rep outside right now, and I'm the only one who wanted to come on camera, but okay. I thank you again for the opportunity. I really do appreciate you folks. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next we'll take any in-person testimony on Kauai. Is it time now? No, That's not yet. Okay, Sorry. you call me uh, when we'll, you're we'll ready. We'll call your name. Okay, we'll call you by you. name when we're ready to take your testimony. Thank you. One second. All right. Okay, we've got Ken Chow. What are you doing? You can just talk uh, at the screen. Can everybody hear? Hello, my name is Ken Chow. I'm from Lihui, Kauai. My question is this. A land app contains of 150 feet, 120 feet, two hours in the water. But what if it could take me four hours to take this thing out? And another question is this, how far can away I set it? If I'm gonna set 150 feet, I get one mile of nap, how far away can I do it? And how deep can I go? You guys doing the laws opposite. I'm a commercial fisherman. Same like surround net and lay nap. If I surround one place, 30,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds, could take me hours to take this thing out. So you guys got to define 
how we can do this, how deep we can go, how far away I can settle. Or these rules are not, not, not gonna work. Whatever you guys do. I've been doing this for 200 years. We we're grandfather guys, my father guys, and now I'm doing them. Rivers, you talk about rivers. We do all brackish water, not fresh water. We surround, we lay. It could take us hours to take this thing out. So you tell me, you're telling me two hours to set. We're gonna take me three hours to take this fish out. The other set say out of other side now, thousand feet away, two thousand feet away. The thing is set in over three hours. So how many nets can I set? Five thousand feet, six thousand feet. So I can set Hanamalo Bay. 5,000 feet, I can go Wailua, I can set another 5,000 feet. Now, if out of 5,000 feet, it could take me five hours, I can person. So what I'm supposed to do? You guys killing the fishery. The state of Hawaii is killing the fishery. I've been an Ikashibi fisherman a long time. You can set the buoys up, it's wrong that. Aggregate buoys is wrong. Remove all buoys. You talk about sustainable fishing. The Hawaiians are talking, they're right. For Molokai, Maui, Biga, they're all right. You guys killing the fishery, the state of Hawaii. Remove all buoys here. Everything works. You guys, illegal thing. And first of all, who can please the area? Who's going to fish the area? Thank you very much. When it's Ken Chow, call me. I want to meet you personally. If you see my reports from 80s to 90s, I say, everybody, remove all buoys. You're talking hey. about fishing nests now. That's what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all for Kauai. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we'll take any in-person testimony on Oahu. Uh, no in-person testimony uh, from Oahu. Thank you. Okay. And then um, next, we'll move on to the Zoom testimony. So... The first person signed up is Alex Falardo. Please uh, turn your video on and uh, state your name and proceed. Yeah, I don't I don't see Alex on. We'll move on. Um, Trevor Latour. Okay, I don't think he's present. Next up, Mike Nakachi. Aloha, everyone. My name is Mike Nakachi, uh, here from the Ahupua'a of Waikoloa on the island of Mokuokiabe. Um, I'm in support of um, all the rules, um, but like um, that sister said from Molokai, you know, I, I'm, I'm more so here speaking about the WARFMA rules and more so about asset forfeiture. Um, I think that this is a mechanism that is long needed. Um, Dar and Docare, you represent the Konoiki um, for us now. And as a Konoiki, um, many transgressors of illegal aquarium fish collecting here on our moku have basically only got a slap on the hand. Um, very minimal civil fines um, where several hundred fish were taken. And the most upsetting thing is that um, in the process, um, without civil or without asset forfeiture, without doe care having um, 
the ability to keep those assets until um, due process runs its course, um, that is essential because in the case of two Malahinis or three Malahinis that were not from and have no mo'oku auhau to this place, come in here, rape our resources, had over 400 or whatever, 300 fish, leave the people in the water. The kia'i are watching and we are watching you at Dar and Dokir to do what is pono. I know there's gonna be many different opinions and I respect all of those folks' opinions. And everyone has this right for civic engagement here to be at the table. Asset forfeiture is critical because those particular people that were convicted or could have been convicted because they were not here, they were a flight risk. They sold all of their assets over 200 something thousand dollars in potential fines for DAR, for DLNR, when poof, and in the process, millions of fish from Armoku um, are for an aquarium trade. When we have people throughout the Pai Aina that are talking about cow cow fish. So, DAR. Do care, do the right thing, and um, create that asset forfeiture. Mahalo nui, everyone, for your time. Thank you, David. Aloha. Mahalo, Mike. Um, next on the list, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Lizam Kaluch. I don't see Lizam on. So we'll move on to the next one on the list, Mahina Poi Poi. Okay, I don't see Mahina. Next, um, Tara Rojas. Okay, aloha, this is Tara Rojas. I'm uh, here on the island of Oahu. And I, you know, been in different meetings, testifying, and I just, I'm not a lavaia. And I just wanna make sure that the voices of the lavaia have been consulted and have been heard. And please know that each mokupuni, each island is unique and also needs to be consulted. I believe this is gonna be a statewide, you know, change in the rules. However, you really do need to consult each area of the different islands, in my opinion, and to make sure you are definitely consulting with the Lava'a. And please know, just as with the Aina, with the Vai, with the Kai, with the state, this illegally occupying state, making so many rules and just completely disregarding the Kanakamoli's cultural gather all, you know, rights being taken away on the daily, like on the daily for months and years at a time, that you just have to be really cognizant of that. And please know that, you know, there may be rules that are good as you heard the previous testifier where it's to avoid having outside influences working in the islands and in places that they should not be in the first place. However, uh, I just honestly want to make sure, first and foremost, that the Lavaya and those who gather their food from the Kai and from the Aina, that their needs and wants and rights are being first and foremost, rather than the state wanting to do what the state's wanting to do. You know, and like I said, I testify almost like daily weekly regarding just trying to protect the aina from it being bought up and then you know used and now other food sources you know regarding the pua'a and then now this one you know for the lavaya like when is it this going to end so i just wanted to make sure i'm doing due diligence and holding space for 
and uh, accounting for and making sure that, especially like, you know, for example, the kupuna who maybe like are not into, you know, these, these meetings, but make sure that you're on the ground doing this before you implement something that always, you know, seems to um, penalize kanakamoli, but give, you know, foreigners like, you know, like a slap on the wrist. So make sure Lavaya are consulted. Mahalo. Mahalo. Next on the list is Clayton Kubo. Go ahead, Clayton. So, Clayton Kubo, why me Kauai? The, the issue that I get in my head, uh, David, is like you said, right? We gotta, we gotta toward you, right? Okay. So, the money deal that you gotta pay $25 to register. Nah. That, that I, I, I totally disagree to the maximum. And since other people had go off topic, now I can go off topic too. Okay, I feel that that is fair. Okay, hey, how's it there, Ken Chow? I hope you remember me. I'm pretty sure that you stay still listening. I still in this fishing game. Maybe I'm not on a vessel, but I still in this fishing game. Okay, so David, now what I like address to you is this, and I'm gonna reiterate. Since other people went off topic, I can go up, um, likewise. Okay, so what I like to see is when you guys going to do the shark bill, the permits, and also the crustacean, when you guys going to take that on, okay, still waiting. It's been how many, you know, what, over one year now. And David, I, you know, as you know, I've been asking you guys that. I continue to ask you guys that, and now I'm doing it in public testimony i asking you guys that because like i said to you david you guys should tell the politicians that you guys need way more time and then gonna get one run date yeah but you guys didn't which i told that to the politicians also so david again reiterating i can see the pay the 25 dollar deal and it's yearly not just a one-time deal it's yearly so, yeah, that will come kind of hard on some people, okay? So I hope you guys take this, my testimony, into consideration. I heard the other brother at the Big Island, he said that also. So hopefully you guys going to take, whoever going to say about the $25 deal, you guys going to take it strongly. Mahalo nui, again, Clayton Kubo, Waimea Kawaii. Aloha. Mahalo, Clayton. Next, we have Leomana Turalde. Okay, I don't see Leomana on uh, Godfrey Akaka. Yep, you can hear me. Yes, we can. Go ahead, Godfrey. Okay. Um. Aloha, my name is Godfrey Akaka Jr., President for the Native Hawaiian Gathering Rights Association, Molokai. I represent many families who practice gathering, subsistence fishing, and hunting statewide. So I'm going to say, I uh, always to pay the permit, $25 for now, then as the years go on, uh, you know, you can raise the rate. Then comes another permit for show net, then another permit for diving, then another permit for polling. So I just saying that me, my family, we will never pay anybody to fish our ocean. You know how much we paying for gas just to get there already? Thanks to the current presidential administration. So, you know, why why you guys are keep trying to add rules and restrictions and add rules and restrictions, you know, you're not protecting our resources by stopping the people and restricting and restricting. You know, it's a form of trying to control the people. This, I feel, is a form of government overreach. The shark bill you guys made was so counterproductive because now we have an increase in predators taking out fish. We competing for, and you guys blaming the people, not enough fish. You tie one hand of our hands behind our back, and then you like tie another hand behind our back. Like the last meeting, David, when I asked, 
anyone from Dar like to assist local divers with world tournaments? And you ask, why? You know, or what is the purpose? You know, that's the kind of things I'm talking about. Um, again, the solution, if you believe, I believe our ocean is sustainable. But for those of you who believe it's not sustainable, the solution is to increase the biomass with artificial reef, just like the buoy. So I, I believe the buoys is a fad, is a fishing attractive device to go create these environments for the increase the biomass. So again, my solution, I tell you guys again, and every meeting I'm gonna tell you guys the same thing, increase the biomass, stop telling people they gotta, they gotta start limiting the amount of fish they can eat. That's what we survive, that's our livelihood. We survive off of this. Um, and we're not gonna be controlled by the government. We're not gonna pay extra for fish in our own ocean. Mahalo. Mahalo, Godfrey. Next up. Jarek Maderos. Okay, I don't see Jarek on. Um, Alfred Keaka Hiona Maderos. Go ahead. I'm here. Yep, go ahead. I got you can, the, the video. Um, if it's up to you. Okay, telling me I cannot or something. Anyways, aloha, uh, okay. Okay, aloha mai kako, Alfred Kiyaku Hiona Madaris, Hawaii Oahu. I'm a Kanaka Maoli. I am a fisherman, I'm a diver, I'm a hunter, I'm a gatherer, but most importantly, I practice my culture in every single aspect. And one of the main things that I've been learning to do is to protect our natural resources and to protect what we have as Kanaka Maoli which is our rights to hunt and to gather, which is lavaya, fishing, which is diving. The $25 fee I'm in full opposition for because I know it doesn't, it doesn't end there. It's going to start with $25 and it will go up for multiple different things. You know, like the brother from Molokai says, that's what always happens. You know, it's all about overreach and control from what we were seeing. And it's happening at all levels. You know, um, it's pretty crazy to see that we're getting subjected to fines, fees to practice our culture, to provide food for Ohana. But yet, when people come in and they eradicate like the sea cucumbers, you get certain people who take all the sea cucumbers out of our ocean. They take the sea urchins. They take out the groups of things that is illegal. They do not get fined. They do not get nothing. Nothing happens to them at all. When these guys come in, foreigners, Malahinis come in and they grab these exotic coral fishes and, they, and they're caught and they're caught being sold. They do not get fined. They do not get no, nothing, no prison term, nothing. But then we as locals, when we do something, we get harassed by DLNR while we're fishing, while we're diving. They're checking our gear. They're checking everything. I didn't know that DLNR, I didn't know that DAR, I didn't know none of these programs and organizations were made to control the local people of Hawaii, especially the cultural practitioners like myself. I honestly thought it was to protect and preserve our Hawaii for the future generations to ensure that we have wildlife and fish to feed our ohana. You know, there needs to be more conversations done like the uh, Mrs. Tara Rojas said. There needs to be more discussions in the community I'm one person that goes to many new neighborhood boards around the island. I go to different meetings on different mokunuis because I have ohana on every single island. You know, my family go back to way back in the times. You know what I mean? I'm a descendant from Kamanaba. You know, I'm the house of Keawe. What you guys see on, in, in Moko Keawe, that's my ohana over there. You know what I mean? I fight for Evie to protect Evie Kupun. I fight to protect land, to protect our animals. You name that. But the one thing that we, not, we, that we need to protect is our cultural practices. You see that, that they're targeting our food sources, whether it's hog stop, now it's something else. You know, um, these restrictions need to be put in place for others, for outsiders, not for us local people, not for Hawaiians and not for Kanaka Maoli. So mahalo for your time and to everybody out there, keep on fighting for this. Because if we don't fight, we don't speak up, we don't stand up, we don't rise up, they will do whatever they want and we will not have nothing for our keiki and for our future generations to call home or to call Hawaii. 
So we got to speak up. Mahalo for your time again. And I oppose everything that is not for the people of Hawaii. Aloha. Hey, mahalo. Uh, next on the list, Kapua Kea Isaac. Okay, next, Albert Madella. Albert, uh, I see you on, can you unmute? Okay, um, maybe we'll come back to you. Uh, William May Hui Hui. Not here, Malia Waits. Not here, Ash and Al Ainoa. Not here, okay, Abraham Antonio. Okay. Oh, hello. Um, okay. Hello. Oh, sorry. He's calling me about Ashanel. Ashanel. Okay, go ahead. Um, go Aloha ahead and uh, begin your testimony. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, hello. Um, me and my wife, Ashley and Alvin, I know from the Big Island. Yeah, we're totally against the, that $25 fee or even all these extra rules that they're adding on to this. And like what um brother God, Godfrey got to brother, you guys the state should be looking more into targeting more of the invasive species that fucking taking out of our reefs. That is the main, I mean, that is the main goal we should get at. Instead of implementing more rules, more restrictions, we should start paying maybe paying more of the, the locals or the divers for doing them. You know what I mean? Put some instinctive to them. But that's that's all I get for say. I totally oppose all the rules in that. Okay. Okay. Uh, did Ashley want to testify too? Um, no, my wife says you're good. Okay, mahalo. Uh, moving on, Brian Lay. I'm here. Go ahead. Hey, Brian Lay, Big Island. Uh, you know, I agree with everything I've heard so far, so I'm not going to waste time uh, going over other stuff. The only question I had was on the firearms. Why did we just make sharks illegal? I mean, why why can't we shoot Ono and Mahi and other big fish when we're fishing little boats? And does uh, DAR consider bang sticks a firearm? I know the Hawaii Police Department doesn't consider bang sticks a firearm. So using a bang stick on the water, would that be considered not using a firearm and legal under uh, DAR and DLNR's? rules that they've got set up. So those were the only questions I had along with Sabrina with everybody else that's been talking so far. Okay, mahalo. Um, next on the list, looks like we have Cora Schnackenberg. It's your turn. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, so I agree. I totally oppose. My name is Cora Schnackenberg. I'm calling from Molokai. I'm from the Apua of uh, Wailua, Wailau, and also Ualapu'e. I, um, I'm very concerned um, about what you guys are trying to do. I totally did everybody what they said. I do want to say this. The $25 aole, the, we, we actually... There's several acts I want to cite. The Act of 1920 on our, our um, on the Rehabilitation Act, and you know all of this. You folks are really infringing in our our locals, our Hawaiian beneficiaries' rights. Um, this goes back way back, and you guys are infringing. And so I just want to let you folks know that when we talk about commercial fishing, yeah. This whole thing started way before, and then it got entangled into the CBSFA. 
And then the CBSFA started to look at our local rights and infringing all the do's and don'ts and how much we can and when and how. That's all our ole. We know how to take care of our resources. But you know what? All what's happening here, you know the malahini, the reef. You guys figure out the lotion, right? All damaging. Have you ever put fine on them? Damaging our resources? Molokai depends on the subsistence of fishing. And we take what we can eat and only what we can eat. And I don't know why the locals are being penalized for something that they've been really malama. Um, the thing I want to say is that, you know, did you guys put in each island local newspaper that you guys were having this meeting? And if you never, then you never do your job di fiduciary duties because this is very important to our, our locals in the com different communities. So how many of the locals actually had wind of this? I only got wind of this at four o'clock and all those that I would tell couldn't even sign on because there was a deadline. And so, you know, you got to do you guys fiduciary duties a little bit more effectively, like putting it in a newspaper of each local community. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, I did everything. Molokai been taking gas. We don't have that much jobs on, on Molokai. We pay $6.27 for a, ga a gallon of gas. Higher lanai even pay higher, so nobody knows how many much we, how much we pay for gas, you know. And then on top of it, putting putting twenty five dollars. I totally disagree, and I oppose the rules and everything you guys just asked. Um, you guys have um, indicated. Mahalo. Okay, mahalo. Um, next on the list is Shai Rosa. Um, and then I saw Jarek Madaris just enter. So Jarek, do you want to provide testimony? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Thanks for your time. Um, I just logged on, so I kind of heard a little bit of it, but um, I'm kind of concerned about the fact that um, all these new uh, amendments you guys doing, when you guys take this to the ledge, aren't we supposed to be a part of it? Um, having participation in uh, its decision making and before it even introduced at the legislation? Like, it's concerning. Like, I'm on the big island. Now, we do, we steward our shoreline on the big island. We do it ourselves because, you know, time and time again, we see that DLNR just, they just don't do it. You know, like, we cannot count on them. We lost trust in them. You know, like, this whole entity is just, it's disappointing because, man, in 78, when they got the responsibility to manage our resources, man, they just running with it now. And they want to control everything. You know, I believe each county should be responsible for their own. You know, like us, our shoreline is county shoreline. And I don't see why these, you know, before this all came to about 1978, when DLNR, you know, got the Juliana, America's laws. Yeah. I don't think it's fair that uh, you guys just make statutes for, off of our laws of the land, which our laws of the land never need no statutes or no revising. It should have been left the way it was. Safe. Now, it's up for sale. And we, the Kanaka, we the ones that take the hit. Because now you guys want to find people for doing stuff just to survive. It's more like you guys eliminating all our resources. I'm at, you know, on the big island, we do our own 
resource management. And we will buy, we do our community, uh, you know, we do community sustainability. And we're doing good. I don't think, hey, the thing is crazy. People are over picking up PEs or whatever, you know, they don't do nothing about it. People are Burning water, which is already killing our resources, you know, it's just reinvent the wheel. It's fine. Get rid of all these um, statues. But thank you for your time. Okay, mahalo, Jared. Um, Clayton Kubo, I see your hand raised. If if you have additional testimony uh, on the subject of the Lanet rules, you can go ahead and add to your testimony. Well, David, I have one question. So this is a, a opportunity to present testimony. Um, yeah, I not understand. Answering David. questions. I understand, but um, a lot of guys, a lot of testifiers, went off topic. So I just like fly this question out. Okay. Uh, how many testifiers had tonight total? So we're not answering questions. You can okay. you can ask the okay, question. Okay, but I'm gonna ask you tomorrow on the other Zoom. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's fair. Okay. Um, I see Shai Rosa just entered the meeting. Shai, would you like to provide a testimony? Sorry, Shai Rosa, would you like to provide testimony? Okay, is there anyone in the Zoom meeting that uh, wants to provide testimony that hasn't had the opportunity to? Yeah, aloha, this is Tara Rojas. I just wanted to say that it's really odd that there's a lot of testifiers not somehow not able to present or on, and I'm not sure you may want to look into that. If, you know, um, because it doesn't seem right. There's a lot of people, you know, like I know that would be testifying, but you're calling them and they're not on. So I'm not sure if it has to do with your one hour before the meeting rule or what, but it just really seems odd that there's a lot of testifiers that are missing. But I know would be here to speak. Yeah, thank you. Um, if, if they're on, that means they registered on time and they got the link. Um, you know, there may be technical difficulties. Um, Shai Rosa, I see you on. Would you like to provide written test or oral testimony? Um, I see Dar Kauai has a hand raised. Go ahead. Okay. Ken has one more piece of testimony he wants to say. Go ahead. Also, my name is Ken Chow again. You guys talk about $25 for laying that. You should make up $2,500 for laying that. You talk about commercial fishing license to $100. You should make up $100,000. They are certain breed of people to control everything. Like I keep on saying, remove the buoys. They go in there raping the buoys. And he's still not telling me how far I can set my nets. Thank you very much. Make a $2,500, $2,500. Make a $2,500. Commercial license, don't make them $100. Make them $100,000. And do typical things for different things, bottle fishing, all that. Your state is killing the thing. Not us guys, the state is killing everything. Remove all buoys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, going back to any of our other in-person host sites, um, Anyone else show up to testify? Seeing none. Okay, um, going back to the Zoom, anybody on the Zoom that would like to testify that did not get the chance to, um, please unmute and identify yourself.
Okay. So we'll move on. Thank you everyone who provided oral testimony. Persons unable to attend today or wishing to present additional comments may mail written testimony to us by September 9th, 2022. Please mail testimonies to the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Aquatic Resources, 1151 Punchbowl Street, room 330, Honolulu, Hawaii 96813. That address is at the bottom of the screen. And written testimony may also be submitted by email to dlnr.aquatics at hawaii.gov. That's also at the bottom of the screen. Based on the testimonies presented tonight uh, and written testimonies, the department will submit its findings and recommendations to the Board of Land and Natural Resources. If approved, the board, the department, if, sorry, if approved by the board, uh, the attorney general will conduct a legal review. And if approved, the rules will be sent to the governor for his final approval. Um, and if the governor grants approval, then certified copies will be filed with the lieutenant governor's office. And after 10 days, it becomes effective as law. Um, on behalf of the Board of Land and Natural Resources and DAR, we thank you for attending this public hearing. It is now 6.34 PM, and this public hearing is now adjourned. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to participate in this public hearing.